So far, we've encountered a standard box in C3, but C3 offers a number of different box types. In this chapter, we're going to discuss the most important ones, not all of them, but the ones you'll mostly be using in your programming. The first box I want to discuss is the container box. Now, the container box itself is not visible, but it can be used to organize other boxes on the screen. So you can place a container box in your stage tree, and then you put other boxes inside the container box. And then in the container box dialog, you can specify the width and height of the container, the distance to the margin, the adjustment of to the remaining box, and the display condition. And that allows you to, for example, adjust the size of all of the boxes that are within the container box in one go by simply adjusting the size of the container box, at least if the boxes that are contained in the container box have relative, that is percentage, width and height settings. The same, of course, goes with the distance settings and in particular with the display condition. If you specify a display condition for the container box, you can hide or show the entire container, including all the boxes inside, with just one display condition and not having to have display conditions in each of the individual boxes. So to give you an example from a bit of a complex stage tree, here you see all of these different container boxes here that contain other boxes. So this is a multimedia box. These are contract list boxes. And this is actually a good example. So in this container box, we have a standard box that contains a heading. And then we have four different contract list boxes. And there are conditions specified here, which are cut off so you can't see everything. But these conditions determine which of these four boxes is actually uh, shown. All of them are in there and you can turn everything off by just turning off or specifying a display condition in this uh, container box where you can adjust the size of these container boxes with respect to each other and adjusting at the same time the size of, uh, sizes of all the elements in the container box as long as their size is specified in uh, relative terms. The contract creation box allows users to create new records, new lines, uh, new rows in a set tree table. So, for example, imagine an experiment where people negotiate with each other or trade with each other in the market, and thus uh, a subject can make an offer that other subjects should see. Then this offer is uh, processed in Setry as a row in a table that uh, specifies or contains the offer details. Now you would use a contract creation box to create this offer. And the contract creation box, in addition to the typical, the size settings and the margin settings, has the display condition like most other boxes. But then you need to specify a table that contains um, the, or that the newly created rows will go into. You can actually um, have some extra settings like allowing for empty records or allowing all records to be empty, particularly when you allow multiple um, records. So that's this field here. And uh, you can, well, you can make some, some layout settings here as well. So for example, here I have a contract creation box for the contracts table. This is just the box name, so you know what it does, contract maker. And then I have two items that are input items. And these input items take a value for the price that the subject wishes to um, make the contract at, so, so to offer, and the volume, for example, of shares that they wish to trade. And then you have a button in this contract creation box that contains another program that runs in the contracts table like the, which is the same table as the contract creation box. So what this looks like is this here, you have a price field, you have a volume field and a button, submit order. And if you click the button, what Setra will do is it will create a new row in the contracts table that has a price of 23, a volume of five, a maker value that is equal to the number of the subject that clicked the button and since here we're in the contracts table, we need to use the colon to get up to the subjects table. If you want to uh, know the specific scope um, structure in, in this kind of box, 
you can look that up in the manual. But this gets you to the subjects table where Setry looks up the subject number of the person who pressed the button and saves it in the maker variable in the contracts table record. And it also specifies a type variable that is set equal to zero. Now, when people make their entries in such a contract creation box, you can limit which numbers uh, they can enter by using the item entry limitations. Remember, each item allows you to specify a minimum and a maximum and a layout, and this can be used to determine which values people can enter here. Also, the program in the button can be used to write additional variables in the record, and it does so, it, it limits itself to the new record automatically. So Cetri realizes that if you put a program into a button that is in a contract creation box, then this button or this program in the button should modify or affect only the record that is newly created now. And finally, you can use a checker in this button to ensure, to further ensure feasibility or the feasibility of the data that is entered over and above the simply the item entry limitation. So for example, if you have this contract creation box where people can make offers to say um, sell a share, then you can use a checker to ensure that they actually do have any shares to sell and that they have not yet sold all shares that they had. The contract list box is in a sense closely related to the contract creation box because it is used to display the records from a Setri table. So those records that people have created using the contract creation box, you need to usually display to the other subjects or to all the subjects. And for that, you would use a contract list box. Now, again, in addition to the, to the standard fields, including the condition for displaying the box, you have a, you have to specify a table here and then you can set an owner variable. And that owner variable is in this table, uh, a variable name. And if the number in this variable equals the subject number of the person, of the subject sitting in front of the screen, then those rows in the contract list box, so in the list of contracts, will be written in blue font to signify that this is the sub, these are the subject's own records. That's the idea. And now here we have another condition field and you need to be careful to distinguish the display condition, which is the condition for displaying the entire box. And this condition field, which determines which of the rows of the group data table, so which of the records in this table are shown to a given subject. For example, if you have multiple groups in the experiment and you want each group member to only see records or offers submitted by other members of the same group, then you could specify a condition like this here, group equals one. In this case, everybody sees only the first group's uh, entries here. You could also, of course, say group equals equals colon group, which would head up again to the subjects table and compare the group variable in the group data table to the group variable in the subjects table and only if they match such that the records, the rows in the group data tables stem from the same group as the group of the subject or the, yeah, the subject that is currently looking at the screen, only then would they be shown on screen. And finally, we have this sorting field here, which allows you to sort the entries in this list box. So all the, the data in the group data table that is being shown by multiple criteria, for example, subject, subject number, and then price. Uh, you could specify more if you want, all separated by semicolon. And if you want to um, sort them uh, in, in, in a descending order, then you just put a minus in front of these. Once again, here is an example, a contract list box that is called history and um, takes values of the group data table of all those people or all those entries that belong to the first group. And as you can see, there are a number of output items here, the period, and this is all in German, um, the, the subject number, the, actually the number of subjects in total, 
um, the contributions they made, the payoffs and the wealth. And what this then looks like is that you get a table like this where you have the headings of the items, the labels basically of the items as the column headings and you have the values in the columns or in the rows of the table. And as you can see, depending on what layout you specify, you get different numbers, for example, of decimal places here. Now contracts in a contract list box, so the rows in this contract list box can also be selected by simply clicking on them. And you can specify or have a button in the contract list box and then when you click this button, the program that is in the button, that you put in the button, is executed only for the contract that you previously selected. And you get an error message if no contract was selected. And that allows you to, for example, let subject choose an offer from a list and say, yeah, I like this offer, I'll accept it. So they click the offer, click accept. And then in the button program, you would uh, change some of the variables in the contract uh, or in the yeah in the in the entry in the in the table such that it is now considered to be accepted and then the condition in the table in the list box for showing the contract might for example say well those entries that have a uh, a value of 1 in the variable accepted for example will not be shown anymore because they can no longer be accepted uh, by other subjects. And um, again, in this case, the current subjects record in a subjects table. So the persons, the person who clicks the button, this person's uh, row in the subjects table can be accessed using the scope operator. So if you specify this um, line in the program, for example, in the contract table that is in the button, it would set the creator in the contracts table equal to the subject number of the subject who clicked the button. The grid box displays a table that can be manually assembled by adding items which then are interpreted uh, as the contents of the, each of the cells of the table. So following the, the standard definition for, the, for any box, again we have a display condition, but then we can specify the number of rows and columns in the table that we want to display. And we can tell Satri how to interpret the ordering of the items. So we, as I'll show you in the next slide, we input the box, we, we create the box and then add items to the box. And the order in which they're um, listed in the box is interpreted through this setting here. We can also specify some formatting options. Now, here you can see the definition of the box. So this is the, the box itself. And then I've added several items here. And each of these items just constitutes one single cell in the table. So the first item here simply, simply displays period. So this in German, of course, but just this bold printed um, word period and the the formatting is actually specified here in the layout then it says spielerinnen it says uh, betrag pro kopf and so on and all of these texts here are in these items here and below that you would you would see another item that specifies the one and another for this one and another for this 15 and so on so you would find um, n cross n times m items if you have n rows and m columns, for example. Which means that it can be quite tedious to assemble this table. And furthermore, drawing a grid box with many items actually takes Satri a while. So whenever possible, instead use a contract list box because this is a bit of a technical detail. But Cetri essentially sends individual items to the set leaf clients, and that's why it takes a while. Whereas if you use a contract list box, it sends the entire table at once, and that is much faster. The calculator button box is not actually a box, but it is inserted into the stage tree like a box. And what it does is it displays this button on subject screens in Cetri, and when they click it, it opens the Windows calculator. 
So depending on which Windows version, of course, I think this is Windows 7, this is Windows 10, uh, you get the Windows calculator of the operating system. And you also need to make sure that before running the experiment, you set the, the calculator to the setting you want it to be opened at. So for example, set it to scientific mode if you want a subject to see that first. And then this can be a very nice tool if you want your subjects to do some calculations, but you don't want to provide them with calculators, each one of them, you simply give them this calculator button box, which gives them the button, they click it and they get the full power of the Windows calculator to do their calculations in set tree. The chat box can be used to display and exchange chat message between the subjects in the experiment. Once again, we have a condition, a display condition for the box itself. Then we need to specify a table in which the chat messages are saved and the variable name in which they are saved. Now, this is, of course, a text variable, and you can set the number of characters and the numbers of line that people, lines that people can enter. Then you can specify a condition for which chat messages should be displayed to a certain subject. So, for example, in this case, I had different groups, and within the groups, I had members which were distinguished by number in a sense that they had different roles within the group so i also had a different uh, certain group member numbers in there and then you have an output text which basically here this 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 is for displaying the the message itself and then you can prefix or postfix that with some other text so in this case it says unternehmen which is german for a firm and the number of the of the group member here and then it shows the text message and you can also have some some formatting um, settings down here so what this would look like is that you have the, the the chat box here you have a program in the chat box that is executed for each message that is submitted and people submit their messages by pressing enter on their keyboards and then they are saved to the contracts table but the, these additional variables are also saved like the subject number the group member number and the group and this is the the input field for the chat and another chat box is used for the output and that just displays some messages and as you can see this is what this looks like um, they they can see their own messages in this case and then the messages of the others and their own in a different box just to illustrate what you can do with this functionality.